Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this uh, chilly uh, January day. Um, this is your Yoga Solutions Live with me, Mark J. Aquaviva, on uh, Tuesday, 26th of January, 2021. As I hope you're having a fantastic time wherever you are. Um, so let's get on with the, the content. Yes, Yoga Solutions, Yoga Solutions. I've been banding around this word for a for a good while now um, because fundamentally I, I see yoga as a solution, a solution to, um, well, you, you might think that it's about solving problems in yoga, but um, it's, for me, what's developed over the time is, is that yoga, yoga is the, the solution, as in when you find the yoga of it the the issue will be solved <laughs> um but you know that's 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 my bag that's where i that's where i'm at um, i i love yoga and i'm sure anyone that's watching this has probably got a, a similar sort of attachment to the thing but um yes yeah, so what i wanted to what came to me this morning uh when i was meditating um was i want to share with you um, this overview that I've been building over the last 30 years. Uh, and and um, the, the overview is based on, you know, when, when you're embarking on some sort of journey, you, you kind of need roadmaps. You, you, you need a, a direction to point yourself and uh, uh, the ability to recognize recognize the the signposts when you get to places so you don't get stuck there you know so we, we need to have an idea of the shape of things um and that is that is kind of what all types of yoga are about there's an idea that if you do this it'll lead to the outcome you're looking for um in over my 30 years or so um what I've discovered is that propensity to attach to one particular methodology is the very thing that it, it might drive some part of your journey and get you somewhere useful. But then because it's worked, we get attached and we, and we stay attached because it makes sense because it's part of our identity by then. And um, yes, and to let it go is to let go of that part of our, ego <laughs> uh, so so it's um so yeah it's quite it's quite tricky to actually even recognize when there's another leg to go so um and over over, over this time i've been getting broader and broader in the way that i see things and um in, at the beginning of my teacher training days i i, I developed this kind of idea of a sequence of things to attend to that will lead to the yoga and whilst it's to do with achieving postures and you know um, that sort of thing um, it seems quite complicated it seems um, a bit vague but um, what I want to share with you today is a kind of overview picture of things that can be used as kind of a, an ever-expanding fractal as in you can apply it to a single breath you can apply it to a particular posture but it expands beyond that you know, you, you can you can apply it to how you engage with life and it broadens into your entire life journey, yoga journey. I call it the same thing, it's the same thing for me, because um, presuming that life is something that you want to travel through and have a, a, a bigger and better and broader and more complete experience as time goes on, as you get older. Um, so it, it's a simple series of attentivenesses where you take your attention to uh, and apply yourself to these relationships because what it what it turns out is is that um whatever we experience is a direct result of what we think and 
and how we do and what we do because what we think uh, determines the quality of what we do the the way that we engage okay so uh, I'm going I'm drifting into sort of vagueish realms but I, I want to just give you a sense before I, I tell you this so it's not just narrowed down to the to the thing that uh, you're you're thinking about at the moment like your hip joint or your knee joint or the posture or, or whatever it's a fractal and you can do it on the microcosm, you can do it on one, you can do it on a joint, <laughs> you can do it with a breath, and then it sort of gradually expands out until it's the whole thing. And each part, each stage, each thing, each um, will sort of expand upon the previous direction of attention in terms of simplifying things. Okay? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of in educating mode at the moment. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you something, some information. What I need you to do, if you're going to <clears throat> understand me, is to do it on a physical level, because all of this is about your direct engagement with things. Without that engagement, it's just noise in your head. It's just an idea that can bounce around and be agreed with or not agreed with. Okay, so if you're going to listen to me, uh, 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 li listen to this idea that I'm offering, um, we need to apply it in practice. And I'll start on a very simple level, uh, on the physical level it has to be. So <clears throat> the first line of inquiry is very obviously your direct relationship to the earth beneath you that's the first direction of inquiry and and because it's your relationship it's about your responses your engagements not not your, not what your body does that that that's that's you separating from your mind and experiencing something on a in a kind of passive non-involved kind of way it's you immersing in your body and exploring your personal relationships to the earth beneath you. And uh, here's a way of trying it out. It's, it's always through the breath, um, through the breath and action, because uh, the mind moves with the breath and I'll take you into practice so, so that you um, see what I mean. So the first line direction of in inquiry is the earth beneath you. Let's do something like um, turn. Should we turn? Yeah, let's turn to one side. I'm turning to the right. And relax. Because um, we need to start without too much doing. We need to start without the habit, without the um, preemptive, prejudiced uh, reaction to what you normally do. So begin by turning to one side, let's say the right, and relaxing, letting go of tension, whatever happens, and you'll start to feel your weight. And if gravity is something that pulls you towards the ground, that's fine. It's at least you're stopping the propensity to hold yourself up away from the ground, which is a dysfunctional relationship to the earth beneath you. It's not how we're designed. So as you relax, the relationship I'm talking about is through the breath. And uh, the thing I'm, I'm playing with at the moment that seems to be really helping people is in imagining that the breath that you're experiencing is something that originates in the earth, that is the earth breathing beneath you. So as you relax, if the earth is taking a breath beneath you, it'll press up into you. So you start to experience something a bit more like a two-way relationship between you and the earth. And then the breath then the, the breath leaves, 
the, and if it's the earth that's breathing, then you experience the earth kind of deflating, dropping away from you. And obviously, because of gravity, you'll drop with it. So start with a couple of breaths with the, um, and this is your relationship to the earth below. The, the earth breathes up into you, you feel that, the pressure coming up. But you'll also feel, if the breath comes into you from the earth, you'll also feel a slight uplift without you having to lift yourself to find it. And then you let the breath go and the earth drops away from you and quite possibly your body drops with, quite probably, <laughs> your body drops with the earth. This time, when you experience the earth breathing up into you, some part of yourself, just as the breath releases, imagine the earth falling away from you as before and your base dropping with it. But if it's your base dropping with it, where you've received the breath kind of dissolves into you. And if you found that, that uplift you get from the arrival of the breath, from the earth breathing into you, kind of stays with you, even as your base falls away from you. As if the earth is kind of feeding you uprightness from its contact. Now, it doesn't involve you pushing the earth away on any level. So any amount of pushing down to be up um, is contrivance and it's unnecessary effort and will block the breath, the passage of the release of the breath. So let's try it on the other side. So you relax. You would have accumulated tension on the first side. So relax. Let the earth breathe up into you. And so you should feel the pressure coming up. And if that can meet somewhere inside of you without you lifting, you pause there for a second and allow the earth to drop away from you with the exhale so that you receive the energy, so that you, your base falls away from you. You will feel more upright. You'll be lighter. Okay. So that's the first direction of attention, is the relationship between you and your earth. And it starts with you uh, tuning into what the earth is, doing, is um, your physical engagements. Now, for example, if you're holding yourself up away from the ground, you haven't got a relationship. If you fall down with the earth, with gravity, then you've got, you're not taking part in that relationship. But through the breath, you can find this relationship to the earth below that I'm talking about. And uh, if you follow those instructions, you may have had an experience of becoming more um, supported in an upright fashion. Okay. Second, second direction. Space directly above you. In more sort of esoteric terms that will kind of relate to uh, higher thinking, I suppose, purpose, I don't know. Uh, we can talk chakras if you like. But the space above you is, you have a relationship to it. And if your relationship to the space above you is that it is weighing down upon you, then that's then the experience you will have, your relationship to the space above you, something is that it is something that you have to lift up to be with. And then when you relax, you fall back down again. You can try this. Um, you, uh, it's quite difficult to do a sitting, so you might want to stand or, or be in a chair or something, uh, because uh, the space above you, it, it requires uprightness. Um, and sit, sitting and being upright is quite a tricky thing. 
But whatever you're doing, if you, if you can sit comfortably uh, without tension in your spine, then a, a way of finding a relationship to the space above you is to get the weight of your wings out of the way, because most of us hang our wings off us, and that tends to get in the way of things. So if you can uh, grab hold of a wrist or a couple of fingers or, or something that allows you to relax your shoulders wide from the contact, so you're not holding them up, you're relaxing them wide. And then if you can find a place on the top of the head where from lifting your face, you can then relax up into the contact. As opposed to from hanging your head down, you lift up into the contact. So from being open directly to the space above you, and uh, it's useful to open your eyes and get in touch with that space somehow. With the weight of your arms on your head through your hands with relaxed shoulders, if from that relate from that being with the space above you, you meet the weight of the hands, the arms, then that's you relating to the space above you. Okay. Uh, if doing this makes you dizzy, it's uh, something to do with pressure and your heart, so you don't have to keep your arms up. But you do need to have this relationship to the space above you. If you've got a, f a sense of it, I would bring the arms down so we don't interfere with sensation too much with the lifted arms. And with this ongoing sense of above, turn to the right, if you want to join me, and I suggest it. So in this occasion, we're relating to the space above us. So just sort of leave your base behind, be relaxed, um, as if as if the earth is something that might fall away from you, but you just let yourself let your base drop with it. Whilst you receive the breath, or you feel the planet, the the atmosphere around you taking a breath, the world breathing, filling with a density of air pressure. Feel that pressure, and as the earth and the sky around you takes a breath. Some of that might touch you through the top of the head like the weight of your arms was. And you can meet it so, so that you can receive some of that breath. And the breath releases, you know, the, the earth releases its breath, the pressure is reduced, you can relax. And that's when your head will lull one place or another, unless the breath that you've received and you draw into yourself somewhere, when the atmosphere around you dissipates, it exhales, when it when the pressure is released, it travel and it travels away from you. If you stay with that contact, stay with that dissipating sky. Not by reaching, but by just staying with it, like you would your head touching your hands. And then the breath that you've received will be absorbed within you, rather than pushed up again, pushed out through your head. So you receive the breath from above, you stay with it, suspended. And as the planet exhales out into space, you rest from it in that place that you receive the breath, dissolving inwards. And you want to just dangle your base away from that contact. Let's try the other side. If you have any neck and shoulder problems, you need to reorganize, you need to find a direct relationship to the space above. Through the breath. And then your job is to not fall from it, to stay with it, to stay attached to it as the breath dissolves in your body. Letting your body drop away from wherever you've received and absorbed the breath.
Okay. So relationship to below, relationship to above. When you've done that, when you've found that, you unify those two relationships. So in the middle, let's be with the earth below, receiving within us somewhere, and allowing our base to fall away from us as we absorb the release of the breath. Be with the space above, receiving the breath from there, somewhere within you. And as the sky dissolves away from you, it exhales away from you, you stay with it, allowing yourself to travel with the release of the breath, of the earth's breath, but dissolving into the wherever you've received the breath. Below and above equal each other. So you are sitting sandwiched between above and below, receiving from both ends, attached to both ends. And as you dissolve towards the center, earth and space elongate you by moving away from each other. So you're starting to be able to relate to within. This is the third direction of attention, not the first. That's a mistake most people do. They go for. They go directly for looking inwards. We need to relate to the earth and space above us to um, well in with harmony, with good relationships in the first place to be able to have the wherewithal to find solutions for our relationships to within. So that's our third direction. From the earth, through us, through the entire system, can we find a relationship to within, from above, through our entire system? Can we find good relationships to within from the way we relate to those two directions? The way you relate to above and the way you relate to below need to equal each other. So that between above and below, you can be within in a harmonious kind of way. And this third direction, it starts to get confusing for the thinking mind because it's not one direction or the other. It's from within to without, it's from without to within, from up to down, from down to up, between up and down, and the spaces within. And all of these things relating to each other in a useful, harmonious way that keeps you more accurately, develops more accuracy in the inward journey towards the center, centers. Okay, That's the third direction of attention. When you developed that relationship between above and below, back to your center, the next relationship is from your center, from within to without. So it's the space all around you, how you, how you grow from your center. With that relationship between above and below, uh, supporting you at your center, wherever you choose it to be, and there are we have to resolve all the various point, cent, central points that um, are involved in our somatic experience of life, all the chakras. So try this. Receiving from above and below, as you release the breath into some central part of yourself, I would suggest solar plexus, heart, throat, just to keep it away from the periphery. As you dissolve inwards towards the center, meeting above and below, supported by above and below, then begins from within to the space all around. And it's with the release of the breath when you are absorbing the energy from above and below, when the planet and the atmosphere are supporting you in length, 
by moving away from each other. Then from your center, you can thread through space. From your center, you'll have a chance to thread through space. So it won't feel like you're lifting. You know, it won't feel like you're lifting because you'll be exploring your engagement through space, through space from your center with the releasing breath. Every inhale needs to set you up to be centered. So from above and below into, into within. When you dissolve inwards and above and below set, move away from each other, you are centered. And from your center, you can, through fingers, through toes, if you were, from your center, through fingers, through toes, moving in space, moving through space, becomes a centered experience. So now we're practicing um, postures. Now we're practicing how to move through life. Okay, That's the fourth part of the fractal, from within to without, supported from above and below. Could be enough. Um, the, 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 those first four are to bring you to a place of a life well lived, to bring you into actual daily rhythmic practice. And it can be applied to a breath, a posture, and how you engage with life. When we engage with life, it needs to come from the center. Otherwise, we are being pulled around by everything around us and distorted by that relationship to it. There are two more stages which are kind of the paradigm shifting, well, all of it's paradigm shifting, but the last two stages are where we get into much broader territory. And let me see if I can describe what those are. Once you have a supportive relationship between below and above, that brings you back to your center in that two-way relationship. Once you can expand through life, once you can expand into the space all around you from that relationship, the next thing that can happen is that you are supported by the space that you have expanded into. So you get the experience of letting go into the space all around you through the arrival of the breath. And then that breath that is arriving all around you dissolves into you, towards your center from all directions. So now we're getting the beginning of support from all that is above below and everything around you you work for it a little by finding in, finding it uh, getting the, the 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 breath of everything around you to support you and enter you and then your job when you let it go is once again to return to allow the outward release to bring you back to your center. And those are the last two stages. And um, I suppose in traditional yoga, you would call the penultimate one pranayama and the last one ishvara pranidhana, surrender to all that is. One, relationship to earth, Two, relationship to the space directly above you. Three, from those things relating to each other, through you, you find a relationship to within. Four, from within, supported by above and below, you explore the space all around you. You move through life. 
Five, you discover support, breathing support. You, you become fed by all that is all around you. Six, so that you can let go into where you are and back to your center to be fed and centered. Good. There you go. You can apply that to any breath, any posture, any pranayama. You can apply that to a sequence. You can make that your yoga journey. You can spend six years exploring your relationship to the earth. Six years exploring your relationship to the space above you. Another six exploring your chakras as you relate to above and below. A further six as you, from within, you find the wherewithal to thread through space and engage with it from your center. Another six to learn how to receive support from everything around you. And the final six to release back to your center as you trust and let go into everything around you. 36 years. <laughs> Where and when you get there, that's the next starting point. Or one breath to find the support from the ground below. One breath to find the relationship to above that supports you. A breath between above and below that centers you. A breath that, as you release it and center, you feel free to thread and explore space. I'll do a couple of those, because that's the practical part, that's the practice. A moment, a breath, a pause, where everything around you is also something that feeds you and supports you, so that you can have another breath and release it back to your center as you release outwards in space. Lovely for practice, lovely for physical practice, but um, if you're paying attention to these things in a real practical way, then they'll start to have much broader ramifications because you will be in intimate relationship with all of these things. Okay. A fractal, a fractal pattern, the entirety of my work in a nutshell for you. I hope, I hope that was useful. Um, feel free to apply it. If you're a teacher, feel free to refer to it. Um, obviously, it would be honorable to mention, mention me if you do. Uh, explore it for yourself, get your own words for it. And um, yeah, it's uh, my, my job is to share this stuff. I seem to have a, a connection to these things. And um, my job is to share this stuff. And uh, I feel good when I can do that. So, um, and yeah, what, what have I got coming up? Uh, I'm supposed to put on another Saturday workshop. I haven't put, got it together yet. It'll probably, probably be pretty soon. Um, uh, I have come, come and do a one-to-one -one with me. You can, you can sign up for a, you can look, uh, you can book a free 15 minute, um, private consultation and I can, we can talk about what you need, you know, specifically get down to the nuts and bolts of it. And, uh, and if, if it's a relatively simple question, I might be able to help in that 15 minutes. If not, um, I'll be able to give you something you can do. But if, uh, if it's a, a more complicated thing, you might need to book in some time with me. And of course, I need to make a living. So I'm, I'm also okay with, with um, uh, receiving for, for my efforts. Um, uh, yeah, but... You know, if you want to find out whether I'm whether I can help or not, then just book. It's free. 
So there's no, nothing, nothing to stop you. Um, you can get access to all my yoga solutions if you become a silver member and, and the ultimate anti-stress course, which I'm always adding to. And if you want to become a gold member, you get access to all my classes and all my workshops on demand. And, and you can turn up for the live event on, as view only. And of course, for dedicated few, um, I have platinum membership as well. So there's, um, I have a lot, of, a lot on offer and um, there's some intense CPD courses that um, work on each of those individual principles. That's how I structure most of my stuff. Um, you'll find them in the somatic intelligence uh, course list, uh, haptic intelligence, proprioceptive intelligence, etc. So um, yeah, get in touch, come and join me on something. I'd love to work with you in person. And I shall see you at the same time, same place next week. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva. This was your Yoga Solutions Live. Until the same time, same place next week. Bye now.